Hello friends, I want to share with you some very helpful advice. I have published over 200 videos on the topic of abortion within the Adventist Church. I have read every book, every pamphlet, every research paper I have presented on this topic at Loma Linda University. I have collected many personal letters and testimonies from over the last 50 years. I have interviewed and spoken with many lay members and doctors and theologians, hospital administrators and church leaders on this issue and I have listened to the interactions that many of you have had with discussing this topic with others and if you are watching this video it is probably because, hopefully because, you want to see the Adventist Church stop supporting the killing of children and I want to give you some very helpful advice. Number one, never, never say the word abortion and never say the word hospitals and I'll explain why. And number two, attack the error of the soul. I'll tell you why and this is critical. The entire structure, the entire edifice of the Adventist Church's support for abortion is built upon the claim that killing children is not just a freedom, it is a religious freedom, that it is a religious liberty, freedom of conscience, just like worshiping on the Sabbath. That's why for the last 30 plus years, the official positions of the church say right here that it's a matter of individual liberty, personal liberty of women. It's a matter of Christian freedom and freedom of choice that any attempt to coerce someone not to kill their own child should be rejected as infringements of what? Of personal freedom. That we should respect individual conscience. That the church does not serve as a conscience. And again, the church is not the conscience because decisions about killing your own children should be left to the, that's right, the conscience. We are told with 100% certainty that rape and slavery or pedophilia, oh, these are not matters of conscience. The church will tell you what not to do. But oh, killing children, oh, that's freedom and conscience. However, this is a false teaching and it has a huge weakness. It has an Achilles heel because the teaching that abortion is a religious act is based upon the claim that the living unborn child is not a living human being. Just like when you put a painting on the wall and it hangs on one nail, this teaching hangs on this one claim. The General Conference leadership of the World Church has published official dictionaries and official books to tell the world what Adventists believe. The title is literally Seventh-day Adventists Believe. However, in all of these books, they make the claim that a soul is a living human being and that a new soul comes into existence whenever what? Whenever a child is born. You can find this in the chapter Nature of Man and it's the exact same definition in the official church dictionary. A new soul comes into existence whenever a child is born. Definitions, definitions are key. They are critical. When the Adventist church claims that abortion is a religious freedom, this makes sense. They can can legitimately say this because by their own language and definition the unborn are not living human beings which makes abortion a matter of different beliefs. Every trade, every occupation, different religions and different denominations they have their own peculiar terminology and vocabulary. And if you don't understand the terminology, there will be problems. And a great explanation of this was given in the book The Kingdom of the Cults by Walter Martin in chapter 2 titled Scaling the Language Barrier. He is criticizing Mormons and Jehovah Witnesses and he makes a very helpful observation that applies to abortion in our church. The vocabulary of the cults is not the vocabulary of the Bible by definition. Through the manipulation of terminology, the cultist has the Christian at a distinct disadvantage. The cults capitalize on the almost total inability of the average Christian to understand the subtle art of what? Of redefinition in the realm of biblical theology. This is exactly, he is so on point, this is exactly what has been and what continues to happen within the Adventist church. The people who support killing children, they get away with this because they use the same language that you do, but they have a completely different definition for the nature of the unborn. And as long as you and I allow them to have this definition printed in black and white and published in our own official 
official church books, as long as we allow this to continue, nothing is ever going to change. However, this is the Achilles heel. This is their weakness. And I'm urging you to please, please attack this falsehood with everything that you have. And the good news, there's a lot of good news here. The good news is that this completely bypasses any and all talk about abortion. You don't even need to say anything at all about abortion, not even one word. This completely bypasses any talk about hospitals and statistics. This has nothing to do with hospitals or statistics. This has nothing to do with politics. This is not a political question. This is a theological Bible question. This is a question of how does the Bible define the nature of the unborn and authors of the Bible in both the Old and New Testaments consistently and unanimously defined the nature of the unborn as whole, complete, living human children with the exact same Hebrew and Greek words used for born children. They are sons, babies, children, and our brothers. Even the angel Gabriel, who came from the presence of God, defined John the Baptist as a living human son from conception. These children are defined as physically wrestling and jumping around inside the womb. And guess what? The dead don't jump around. Over the last year or so, listening to your and other people's feedback, I am and many others are convinced that the very best thing that we can do is to bring this problem before church leaders and demand an explanation for this. And one of the reasons I say this is because people in our church who defend abortion, notice they don't want to talk at all about this. They want to ignore this. And that's key is pay attention attention to what the enemy wants to ignore. They do not want to make this an issue because they know that if the church is forced to revisit and address the nature of the unborn, the smart people know that doing so will have huge implications for our teaching on abortion and religious liberty. They know that if the church has to fix this error, it's going to expose and undermine all their decades of falsehoods. And that's great. That's exactly what we want. They know that. And so they want to ignore this. And that is exactly why the very best advice right now is to do the exact opposite of what they want and bring massive attention to this. So here are some very helpful practical tips. Number one, over and over I have personally experienced and others have had the same experience that when you press this issue, church leaders have a tendency to try to push you to either one side or the other. This teaching is completely indefensible. And when you bring this up and ask for a biblical explanation, Adventists are completely helpless and vulnerable. And it's quite common for them to react by trying to bait you into one of two sides, either saying we are not Catholics or that we shouldn't follow the Catholics, which is dumb and ignorant because Catholics don't teach this or the other side, they will try to bait you into a conversation or discussion or argument about abortion. Now, listen very carefully. Do not take the bait. They are trying to derail you from the specific question about the nature of the unborn and get you off onto some other topic. Do not, do not take the bait. This is why the best advice is to never say the word abortion and never talk about hospitals or statistics. Don't even go there. It's not even necessary. Don't waste your time. Go straight to the jugular and point out this error. There is a really neat video online right here of a jaguar attacking a crocodile. And if you watch the video, you can see the jaguar sneak up and jump on the crocodile. And he bites in at the base of the brain of the skull, instantly disconnecting the nervous system once the jaguar sinks his teeth in, that crocodile is paralyzed and he can't do anything to fight back. This is exactly, this is exactly how to attack abortion. Animals in nature, they don't want to mess around and play games and have a discussion. They go straight for the spinal cord or jugular. Don't waste your, don't waste the Lord's precious time arguing about hospitals or statistics or politics. Don't even waste your time. Go straight to this official false teaching, which brings us to the second tip. You need to study and memorize these Bible verses right here especially. You need to be able to quote specific scriptures that define the nature of the unborn as living human children. You should know these Bible verses so well that if I were to come to your house and walk into your room in the middle of the night or 
two o'clock in the morning and if I walked over to your bed and grabbed you and shook you awake and said, hey, what are the Bible verses that define the nature of the unborn? You should be able to immediately rattle off Genesis 25, 22, Isaiah 37, 3, Ruth 1, 11, Luke 1, 36, 41, 44, and Hosea 12, 3. The Greek and Hebrew words used for the unborn are the same exact words used for born children. There is a lot more, of course, that you can say, but for 99% of the people that you will talk to, this is enough. You can also add that Ellen White and the Adventist pioneers unanimously defined the unborn as living human children and that this is an established medical scientific fact. Our teaching here contradicts everything, science, the pioneers, and the scriptures. And another good news is that this allows us to completely bypass the death cult in our health ministries and all of the bioethicists, aka defenders of eugenics. You can bypass and ignore all of the hospitals. You have to contact our theologians and all of our church leaders. Forget about the institutions. Go straight to our church leaders. Contact the theology teachers and professors and theologians and especially you need to contact the top theologians in the BRI, the Biblical Research Institute at the GC. Now, I have already started the habit of calling the BRI every week and leaving a short one-minute message on their answering machine. Something like, hello, I am a member of the church and I want to know why our official books and claim that the unborn child is not a living human being. Please have the theologians there explain why our official books about what Adventists believe and our official dictionaries contradict established medical facts and also the scriptures. Why are we as a church dehumanizing these little children? Please correct this error. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Or something like that. Short to the point. And the third and final tip for today is to print out. You need to print out a copy of these pictures right here. Don't waste your time trying to argue with people and tell them what the church teaches. Just show them and let the pictures do the talking. This is objective, documented evidence published in black and white in our official books. So there is no possible way for people to ignore this. This is also good news because people can't say that this is a conspiracy theory or someone's opinion or something written on some forum or Facebook post somewhere. No, these are documented facts, both the old version and even the most current 2018 version just a few years ago state right here, see it for yourself, the Ministerial Association of the GC assumes what? Assumes full responsibility for the accuracy of this book. Editing, copy editing, and proofreading for this book was done under the direction of the Ministerial Association. So they literally boast right here in all their books that this is a GC official book and they accept full responsibility for this disgusting, pagan, Egyptian, science-denying, scripture-denying error dehumanizing little children. So please print these pictures out and demand an explanation. So anyways, for today, that's it. Very simple. When church leaders start getting emails and letters and phone calls, they won't be able to ignore this. So anyways, that's enough for this video. Please stay tuned for more and thank you for watching.